If you've clicked on this video, chances are you're a high performer. Hi, hello, welcome, let's be friends. I completely understand how your brain works and how you function daily. You like getting things done as quickly as possible, you want it all, and you want it yesterday. In my pursuit of happiness, success, etc., I've always been fascinated by the habits and the routines of millionaires, geniuses, innovators. Like, did you know Einstein used to refuse to wear socks? Nikola Tesla would curl his toes a hundred times per foot before going to bed. He said he believed it boosted his brain cells. Da Vinci was a polyphasic sleeper, meaning rather than a seven to eight hour sleep all at once, he'd take 20 minute naps throughout the day. A lot of geniuses' trends were about sleep routines, naps, walking. Darwin even took three 45 minute walks in a day. So in studying these geniuses, learning about modern day biohacking, neuroscience, and habit stacking, I've also come to find some of my own quirky habits that keep me in momentum that I'm gonna share with you. Number one, I have an alarm clock that makes no noise and has no snooze button. There's some truth to you snooze you lose. First of all, the snooze button is bad for your heart. Having multiple alarms can activate an artificial fight or flight response. We know how awful that feels. It's stressful to your cardiovascular system because it spikes your blood pressure and releases cortisol, which is the stress hormone, which is already the highest in the morning. And you're not actually getting any more restorative sleep by sleeping more after your first alarm goes off. So it actually extends your sleep inertia, meaning you'll just be tired for longer. Secondly, when you hit the snooze button, you're conditioning your brain to believe that it's okay to put off your commitments. For me, the time I said I'm gonna wake up is the first commitment I made for the day and there's no better way to earn your own self-respect than by following through with your own commitments you made to yourself. If I don't follow through with this one, how many other important things in my life am I willing to hit the snooze button on? So when my alarm goes off, which I have this bracelet that vibrates to wake me up and does not have a snooze button, I, I don't even give myself the option to snooze because even if it might temporarily feel good in the present to catch a few more Zs, I'm thinking of my future self and how much I want her to succeed. I think a lot about how my environment is always stronger than my willpower. So I wanna create structures around me that in a way force my growth. It's kind of like how there are some fish that will grow to the size of their enclosure. When Steven built our studio, he talked about how this was an environment that would force him to grow. It became a container that was almost intimidating, like in a good way, to grow into a whole new level of opportunity and potential. So all that to say, my alarm clock with no snooze button is the first domino of the day that pushes me into an environment for growth. I've tried a few different morning routines. Andrew Huberman says to get walking outside and to get a few minutes of sunlight into your eyes in the first 30 minutes after getting out of bed. And actual sunlight, not just through a window because the glass filters out the UV light that assists in stimulating your circadian rhythm. It triggers a neural circuit that controls the timing of your hormones, cortisol and melatonin. Robin Sharma has a routine which he calls the 20-20-20 rule, which I really like. The first 20 minutes of your day in exercise, the second 20 minutes reviewing your goals and your daily plan, and the last 20 minutes reading something inspiring or listening to audiobooks so you outperform who you were yesterday. Julia Cameron's morning routine is what I found to be the number one tip for creative unblocking. It's called morning pages. Morning pages are three pages of longhand stream of consciousness, morning writing about anything and for your eyes only, done as quickly upon waking as possible. And these pages don't have to be good writing. There's no right or wrong way to do morning pages. And I actually like this a lot. I feel like it gets my creativity flowing and I can tell how different I feel on the days that I don't do it, that I begin to crave it. Morning pages was originally for artists to break through creative blocks, but it also injects clarity and focus and direction into your personal life. She says that although they do take time, about 30 to 40 minutes, they actually make more time than they take because we move more efficiently throughout our day. So those three routines are typically what I alternate between. I either start by getting outside and walking, doing the 20-20 rule or writing. And then I like to just get right into deep work early before the rest of the world wakes up. Okay, ready for my second quirky habit. I track every working minute of my day. I heard this phrase from Peter Drucker. He said, tell me what you value and I might believe you, but show me your calendar and your bank statement and I'll show you what you really value. I think it's a really great exercise to observe what we say are our priorities and then the reality of where we're really spending our time and money. So as a result, I track every working minute of my day. I have this app called Timeler that's always running in the background of my computer and my phone where I'm tracking every single minute and that way I can look back on my day and my week and see where do I need to maybe adjust? Where did I prioritize? Where can I maybe delegate or make this into a job description for someone else? The first time someone told me about a time study, I thought it was crazy, I thought it was inconvenient, I thought it was annoying. 
Now I do it constantly to kind of compete with myself and strengthen my get it done muscle to see how intentionally productive I can be because what gets measured gets managed. And what gets measured can also turn into transparency for myself to see where I'm spending most of my time and assessing if I'm really operating in my zone of genius or where I'm constrained and feeling resistant so I can either ask for help or be really honest about it to lean into to find a breakthrough. I'm so used to having time alert tracking in the background of everything I do and I want it to be accurately tracking what I'm producing so that I can be intentional. Intentional when I'm on and off. I've heard of companies that only hire part-time employees to work four-hour shifts because they know that if they work for eight, they really only get four to six real productive hours. So for me, I can look back at the end of my day and see what were actual productive hours. If I stop for a break between calls to like get some food or scroll through Instagram, that's not tracked. I'm kind of just competing with myself and strengthening that get it done muscle to see how intentionally productive I can be so that when I'm not working, I can also be super intentional and all out in how I play. And honestly, this kind of accountability helps me stay really motivated too. Or if I ever do feel a lack of motivation or writer's block or just flat out don't feel like doing what I said I would do, you know, if you feel stuck, just move. Your body, your thoughts, your mind, play the see what happens next game. Like if you don't wanna work out, put your gym clothes on and put on a playlist and see what happens. Or if you have writer's block, sit down at the computer, write one sentence, even if it sucks, just see what happens. I'll also track progress and KPIs on certain projects. And it seems obvious that we do this in business, but I also like to do it on personal things like writing. I wanna be a better writer and I made that an identity shift to step into. I committed on my calendar to get up at 5 a.m., be writing at 5.30, and I had a spreadsheet where I tracked my word count by the day and by the week so that I could feel the momentum and seeing those numbers increase and know that I was really improving more than I was just getting my butt in the chair. And then within a couple of weeks, I had brain dumped all of my ideas, my stories, a strategy, and had almost 30,000 words down. The action wasn't perfect. There are days when it was challenging to get the words out on paper, or in this case, keyboard to screen. And if I showed you the document where I wrote everything, the content isn't in chronological order. There's fragments and sentences all over, but it got things moving. So if you feel stuck, just move. And my third quirky habit is that I schedule my day by identity rather than by tasks. When I first heard the phrase, be, do, have for the first time, it really speaks to your identity. When you're being that identity, you will more naturally do the behaviors that identity would naturally engage in. And as a result, have the outcomes that that identity has. I had this coach that demonstrated this for me once by asking, when you woke up today, did you go buy a pack of cigarettes? To which I responded, no, I did not. Why? because I'm not a smoker. Identifying as a non-smoker, it would be completely outside of what I naturally would wake up and do. But holding on to the identity of an entrepreneur, did I wake up this morning, get to work, plan out and work on my goals? Yes, I did because that's naturally my identity. I do this as well for New Year's resolutions. Instead of setting goals, I set identities I wanna step into. This year, I wanna be a writer. I wanna be an entrepreneur. I wanna be an athlete. I wanna be an investor. And instead of just saying, I want to gain this amount of muscle, I think of what does an athlete naturally do to create that lifestyle? And then it becomes a lifestyle shift rather than just a goal or a milestone or a target to hit, it becomes who you are. I actually made an entire video about how I plan my year by identity rather than by New Year's resolutions or goals. I'm gonna link that below. I'd love for you to check it out. And I think it'd be really great for you to consider anytime you're making goals, whether it's a new year or not, because you don't need to wait until the new year or wait until Monday to step into that new identity. I show you how you can install some of that right now. So click below and I'll see you there.